This is from Illusion Entertainment. Uh, same makers of Minions, Despicable Me, and One and Two. And I think the director actually uh, from Despicable Me One and Two actually came back for this one. And it's got an all-star cast. It's got Louis C.K., Kevin Hart, uh, Eric Stone Street from uh, Modern Family, um, and, and they got some really good actors. I mean, even like Albert Brooks. Like last week I saw him in was probably Drive, but he plays this interesting like is he a hawk or is he a yeah. falcon i don't even know what he is Thank you. but he plays the character tiberius and he's actually really funny all in all i actually really enjoyed the movie yes you did you laughed more than the children <laughs> oh come on you can't be putting it's my business true. out there um, i was like have a seat I'm like the little girl in the back can't hear because you're still laughing because <laughs> i mean well in the beginning of the movie um, I kind of was like reserved because I, I like the dynamics between the main character, uh, Louis C.K. His name is Max. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a terrier and he's got his owner named Katie. Mm -hmm. And uh, they got an interesting dynamic relationship. Like he's just in love with her. He's like her man, but he's her dog. Basically. And that, <laughs> but the thing is, like, that's how relationships are with like pets and people. Like they really have that True. like real intimate relationship. And I think that's one of the things from an immersion standpoint and the visuals that they captured that. Like, each time you see the pets in their elements, they're doing things that pets would normally do. Yeah. And you would normally catch on film or even just see them doing, like, why are they doing that? And I think that they caption that essence of pets. But as far as um, the character, Max, like, he's just so in love with his owner. And every single time she leaves, he's like, oh, I miss her. You know, it's, it's really cute, you know. Uh, and then along comes this other stray by the name of Duke. And it busts up Max's whole plans. And I think the thing for me about the movie that the moment where Duke, to me, kind of becomes a threat for Max, I was like, man, man who this push over? Like, I was kind of, like, taken away a little bit because I was like, you know, Max got good things coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, I felt bad for Max. But as the story drew on, I actually grew to love uh, both of these characters in a lot of different ways. But more so the other surrounding characters because it kind of yeah. felt like, there were two different storylines going on at the same time. It was Duke and Max's relationship, but then all the other characters that surrounded him because he's got the love of his life. What's her name? I forget. Um, uh, Gidget. Yeah, so Gidget, she is so in love with Max. She's, I guess, on the other like window from afar watching him and seeing him, and she finds out he's missing, and she wants to go and try to save her man. And that's where all these other characters get involved, such as Tiberius the Hulk and Snowball with Kevin Hart. Yeah, and that's like the best. Out of the two storylines, like I honestly could care less about Max and Doopy. <laughs> I don't care. Who cares? Like, okay, same old story. Someone's there. Someone new comes. They're learning to coexist. They like have an epic fight and then realize, oh, we're better working together. Blah blah blah. Spare me. Um, it was, the <laughs> other storyline was actually, to me, the more powerful part. Mm -hmm. Just having, you know, Gidget, and she was like this cute little Pomeranian from this, like, like upper class little family of greatness. And, like, everything that she did, that was, like, that storyline was good. Yeah. And then Kevin Hart's character, Little Buddy. Like, yes. How he was anti-human. Like, we, won't, <laughs> we, we don't like the humans. I'm like, what? <laughs> like, his, those, I think that part of the story actually made it because... Yeah. Honestly, without the surrounding characters, the movie would have been terrible. Yeah, yeah, I think it, it would have definitely suffered. I mean, even though, you know what I'm saying, the Mac and Max and Duke story arc, you know, it was, it had a good ending. It was very cliche because it's been seen before. You can go so many different movies, like even like looking at Homeward Bound. Like, what was it? Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Sassy, Chance, and... Chance. and yeah, 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 I forget Like, that. I was like, that, it could be taken the same exact movie was, like, basically the same exact scenario. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I could go and say, Homeward Bound was a better movie, even the second one. But 
because of these surrounding characters, like you said, it made it good. Uh, it made it good. Cause like Kevin Hart he, with these notes, like him as this bunny, this bunny has got some screws loose, mm -hmm. and it reminded me of uh, you remember those penguins that uh, the penguins from Madagascar mm -hmm. that was just like always manipulating and doing stuff like. Yeah. He's that bunny, but he's vicious, man. Yeah. He's he's a anti-hero, but at the same time, like he can be considered and then a he villain. Comes like he, like he, I don't know. And it's interesting for me because, as of like, I'm not really a big Kevin Hart fan. <laughs> um, I, I'm like, like he was great here. I'm like, yes, Kevin Hart. Like you're better in anim in animation. Good, go you. Okay, because I mean, I feel like the things that make him like extra. I think like the action is for Kevin Hart and this little bitty bunny. So cute. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, I think he's been nailing it. Because to me, when I looked at uh, the other movie, um, Central Intelligence, I think he did a really good job with that one as well. So for him to have two movies back to back, I, I'm actually really hoping that they make this a sequel because I think that all around, the surrounding characters are interesting enough that they, they can have their, have their own, own story. Art. Absolutely. Um, because Especially get, Chloe. The cat, the obese cat. Yes. <laughs> the cat was everything. She had a little love interest but too. Because, it's because she was exactly what cat, what I think cats are. Cats hate everybody, yeah. and they just don't do anything. And that's what her character. She was like, I mean, I don't care about you or you or you, but I guess I'm here for the ride. Yeah, she 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 helped out because <coughs> Max is in her life, and it, it's a really interesting dynamic that happens between the characters. But I think the surrounding <laughs> characters, like you said were the most interesting parts of the movie. And I said, even the animation, like when you see the scope of it, it all takes place in New York. And I think that they captured all those major set pieces and monuments and different locations. And I think that it brings you into that world. If you've never been to New York, you, it would be actually a really beautiful movie to actually watch. <laughs> also, like, I, we didn't watch it in you 3D. God bless me, though. Oh, God bless you. <laughs> we, we saw it in regular. Yes, um, because every, you do not have to see every movie in 3D. <sighs> It is not necessary. Regular movies are fine. I, I, I agree. And I, that's since I've been with her. We've been looking at a lot more regular movies. But, yeah. but there's a lot of action moments in this movie. Specifically when you got Max and Duke in the sewers. That could have been some really interesting 3D moments as far as action moments. That's, that's all I'm trying to say. So you might actually benefit from a little bit of 3D. I'm not sure. Say that. So what would you give it? Uh, as far as the rating for me, for an animation, I think it did a good job with it. I'm in between uh, 7.5 and an 8. Um, I guess I'll keep it at a 7.5. I think it was really good. I actually really enjoyed it. The beginning kind of took me out of it in the very beginning, but when I got to all the surrounding characters and how much I actually really liked it, I'm excited to maybe see another sequel or at least a spinoff from these other characters. But what about you? I would say I'd give it a hard 7. Um, I think it's definitely more that you want to see at matinee prices. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Like, this is not your Friday night. Let me go see a movie because I want to be. I mean, it's like during the day. Like, I want to chill. I want to laugh a little bit. Yeah. It's definitely like that type of movie. Like, matinee. Yeah. On Tuesdays when it's way cheap. But it's good. It's a good movie. Yeah, um, yeah it's very enjoyable. You can definitely I think enjoy it's it. a movie that kids will enjoy. Like, kids will like it. Adults will like it. So it's cool. I give it a hard seven. Yeah. Like yeah. Hopefully y'all enjoyed our review for The Secret Life of Pets. It was a lovable movie. Interesting dynamics, great animation, good voice acting, specifically yeah. from Kevin Hart and the other girl that did the role of Gidget. Because Gidget, she, she, she made the movie. She's so cute. She she's made a little the Pomeranian movie. out here living and, her life. And she was like, her interaction with um, the Hawk. I was like, after that moment, she sold me as a character. So, either way, hopefully y'all enjoyed the review. Keep it locked. JBS, we ain't gonna stop. We'll be back later. Bye. Peace.